We have a special guest joining us via Skype all the way from my home country, the UK. He's the first black leader of the Apostolic Church and has written a powerful book titled Discover to Recover. Welcome, Pastor Emmanuel Mbakwe. Hello, Pastor. How are you, sir? Hello, Mariwa. I'm very well. And how are you? Very good. It's, it's, it's weird speaking to you from this side of the water, even though I live on that side of the water. That's the power of technology. We'll ride with it. <laughs> so let me ask you, first of all, though, how does a young man who grew up with the brokenness of the Biafran War come to be the leader of, of one of the, the most influential churches to grow out of the Welsh revival in the United Kingdom? Well, it's not something that I scripted. I, I have to attribute that to uh, God himself. I, I, I came into the UK, as you say, um, a teenager, um, out of the brokenness of the Nigerian Civil War. And in the process of time, I came to faith in Christ Jesus. And over a period of uh, something like 25, 30 years, I found myself in the position and the role that I occupy today. I can only attribute that, that, that to God. Now, I, I know that in, in, in the middle of all that, there were some significant landmarks. And in our world, uh, in this day and age, we celebrate the, the big things. And I know you, you've en you enjoyed a time in the world of finance and management. Uh, you were very successful at that, uh, but then went into ministry. But in this book, Discover to Recover, uh, am I correct in thinking you, you, in thinking you look at the issues in life that we face, some of the challenges we all will come up against, and how we get from those challenges to not just a place of victory, but a place of living the will of God. Yes, indeed. What the book is, it's an outworking of my personal journey. Um, uh, and uh, that journey is intertwined and actually reflected using the story of Isaac in Genesis chapter 26. As, as a, a case study, um, the book came out of a process, a two-stage process. Um, one was a personal a leadership crisis where I was, um, and we were as a, as a movement trying to discern the, the will of God for us. And uh, I remember one morning around four o'clock, God said to me, go and read Genesis chapter 26. I read it, I knew immediately that God was speaking to me in relation to the issues we were facing. And I had to go to Wales um, to speak to a bunch of leaders. This was in March 2011. And then later on in, in, in October 2011, I spoke to a group of leaders in Scotland, uh, again, leaders within our movement. And after I shared what I had to share, again, taken out of that passage in Genesis 26, uh, one of them said to me, um, we, um, you, this, what you just shared deserves and deserves a, a wider audience. So I took that as a, as a real compliment, as a challenge. But in between, I had written a book. Uh, I had written th three articles entitled um, Thriving Through the Downturns of Life. Mm -hmm. And I, <laughs> through that process, I came to recognize that actually God had something to say to us out of the experience of Isaac and out of the, uh, some of the other experience, the experiences, some of the other characters within the Bible. Let me, and so the book was birthed. Pastor, let me ask, though, for, for someone who hasn't read the book and has just had the opportunity to, to meet us for the first time, what are some of the, the key things that you found that was ap applicable not only to the movement, but to, to a mother in, in Australia or, or, you know, a young person in Zimbabwe? Well, there are some, some key, key lessons that come out of um, Isaac's journey, and those key lessons form the focus of each chapter. It really begins by saying that we all face um, crises, moments and seasons of crisis. And the first chapter lays the foundation for that. And uh, under the overall umbrella, that um, in that, in the bare moments of crisis, we need to hear from God. So the starting point uh, is that we need to walk in revelation, not necessarily information. Information is available to everyone. All you have to do is Google. <laughs> but revelation is something that comes as a download from heaven to us as individuals. Mm. So 
that takes that becomes the, the basis and the blueprint and part of it and then says okay if you receive the revelation you have to walk you have to prosecute it you have to follow it through and you have to work hard and part of the things that we see in in life is that people often um are not prepared to apply themselves uh, and uh, they expect things to fall into place well they don't the other thing as well is that you have to remain focused in the goal and, mm. and this was what we see in the life of Isaac. And so a number of other lessons that we can apply. For example, use the resource that God has given to you. Many of us are looking around and thinking, oh, that person has got it. I haven't got it. But you've got something. Use what you have. And in applying the gifts and the resources that God has given to you, you will walk and come into a place, uh, to your place of destiny. Let me ask you, Pastor, because our, our time is, is almost spent. It's amazing how fast these, these things go. But uh, uh, what are some of the, the stories you've heard back from not just the leaders you work with, but beyond the movement, uh, people who have engaged with the book and the, and the truth in the book? What are some of the stories you've heard or testimonies that you've heard back? A number of them, but I just highlight one, one, one or two. One lady read the book and was so touched by it, she bought seven and distributed it to her friend. I know of another lady who read the book and said it spoke to her directly where she was on her particular journey, and she um, sent copies to her friends in the United States. Um, so, and another young woman wrote um, and has written and uh, written me to directly saying, "Look, I, I I read this book and it's so practical in terms of my process of decision making and the things that I have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis." Another woman read, read the book and not only bought it for a number of other people, but actually asked me to send it to her son, who is currently in prison. And wow. I was delighted to do so. Wow. Well, Pastor Emmanuel Mbaku, president of the Apostolic Church in the UK, thank you so much for joining us on Turning Point. Miwa, thank you so much for having me. It's a, it's a delight and a pleasure to have been, uh, been on the program.